Hey guys, this is John Carr, and welcome to SpeedGrade. I'm going to give you a quick overview by grading a clip so you can see what SpeedGrade is all about. There are many ways to import footage. You can use the Send to SpeedGrade via Premiere Pro, import via EDL, or import individual clips from your hard drive. So here is a 5D clip that I have. I'm going to click the plus button, add it to our timeline, which is right here, and then I'm going to bring up our viewer. So with the viewer, you can see we've got histogram, waveforms, there's a lot of customization that can happen in terms of moving things around, making it feel comfortable for you. And this is a shot that I shot a few years ago in Vietnam. It's a, of a lady who is a member of the Red Zhao, and they obviously have some unique clothing that I thought would be good for this tutorial. And so let's jump into actually working on this shot. So let's do an initial pass in terms of balancing out colors. As you can see here, we've got our layers panel, and this is, uh, it's got a primary adjustment already in our layers panel. So I'm gonna take a look at our waveform, and it looks like things are a little bit, uh, a little bit too bright. So let's pull down, uh, we've got our offset gamma and gain. Let's pull down our gamma just a bit to get the exposure looking a little bit better. I'd like to pull down the gain. I, I'm sure we probably have a little bit of clipping going on in that hat, maybe a little bit in the sky in the background. And that's looking pretty good. Now these are cool sliders that are up here as well. This is a really handy one to, to work on color balance. I'm just gonna pull this towards uh, a warmer hue warm it up a little bit and that's looking pretty good so if I if I turn off the eye much like Photoshop After Effects Premiere you can see the before and after so that's pulled it down maybe we pull it up just a little bit more and and I'm happy with that so now the next step would be to create another primary and I could easily go in and offset gamma gain and create an overall look for this image. But what I'd like to do is I'm actually going to use one of these presets just to get me started. SpeedGrid comes with a tremendous amount of variety in terms of presets that they have built in. And it helps you kind of get started in terms of an overall look that you might be interested in. So just browsing through some of them, I'm really liking this cinematic look, the cinematic one. And you can see basically what's happening is, is it's kept the initial primary that I had. But then it's added a LUT on top of that, and that's the Cine Space 2383 LUT that it's added more contrast and, and warming things up a little bit. So I'm liking the overall feel of that, and that is a good place for us to get started. Now one of the things that's happening with this is it's actually pulling out some of the pop that I really liked from this, this uh, Red Zhao hat. And so what we can do is we can actually add a secondary and let's work on that a little bit. I've added the secondary and I'm going to select this red button. Now what that does, let's go over to this grayed out section and let's go to color slash gray and you can see it's creating a mask for us and what it's doing is it's isolating everything that it feels is red in here. Now the problem is, is we've got her face, we've got this basket, we've got some of this person on the side so we need to tweak some of these settings to try and isolate as much as possible, just the tassel, the red shirt, and the red hat. And so by playing around with some of these settings, we can pull some of those extras out. Now, obviously, I don't want to go too far because then I'm isolating some of that hat, which is what I'm obviously trying to avoid. So you have to play around back and forth a little bit. It's looking pretty good. The only thing that's sticking out is this area over here, which I'm not excited about, but we can fix that. So I'm gonna go over to the blur and I'm gonna blur this. It's gonna kind of fill in the hole, soften the edges a little bit, and we're gonna add a little bit of denoise as well, which is gonna help with your overall key. So let's go back to our none on the grayed out section. And let's go into this offset. I'm going to pull it up towards the red, and I'm actually going to do it so it's pretty extreme. And you can see that the red hat is really starting to pop and look pretty unnatural. But the cool thing is, is that you have the ability to come over to the layer section and dial it back using opacity. 
which is something I would recommend. I would recommend coming on strong with a look and then coming over to opacity and pulling it back. And so we can pull the opacity down till we get to something that we feel is a little bit more natural looking, something that is, is what we're after. As you can see, before and after, it's really popping, obviously, her, her red hat. Now we have to fix this area right here. And the challenge with this shot is, as you can see, it's actually on a slider. So I need to do a mask, but I have to account for the movement within the frame. Right, so let's go to the mask section and let's create a square mask. Now this is the widget tool. We'll get to this in a little bit. It's a very handy tool, uh, pretty easy to use, but you can drag on the arrows and some of the corners and adjust the size of things. And it's, uh, it's a very unique and, and useful tool. The more I use it, the more I really enjoy using it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create this mask and this is gonna isolate that adjustment, that secondary adjustment we just made keep this out of the mix, but we have to account for the movement. So the cool thing is, is we've got motion tracking built into speed grade. So I'm going to track this object. It, uh, I've got a bit of a slower system here, so it's going to take a little bit of time. All right, so we're through the tracking, and as you can see, it sticks really nicely to our Red Zao hat. Let's go back over to the look. Now, it's not really doing anything right now, and the thing that we need to do is we have to work with these little boxes here. Now we have apply grading layer to the inside of the mask and to the outside. So we want to go to the inside. And it's very subtle. Keep an eye over right over here and I'm going to turn it off. You can see it's pulling some of that really bright saturation out of this area. So that way we're keeping just our adjustment within that tracked box and everything else is not being affected by that secondary. All right, so we're, we're looking pretty good here. I'm liking the overall look. The final thing that I'd like to do is add a vignette. The way I'm going to do that is, is uh, I'm going to actually add a new layer to our timeline. So if we come over to timeline, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Now you can select this button, which is going to select this layer and create a new layer, pulling all of the adjustments on this, this current layer to the new layer. It's not exactly what we want for this particular instance, but that's useful to have. This is the second option, which is a button that I can drag up to the timeline above our current layer, and it creates a new layer. So I'm gonna call this vignette. And let's come back to our look. You can see we've got our new primary built on this vignette layer. Let's come to the mask area, and let's create a vignette mask. So once again, we're pulling up the widget tool we're going to drag it out. We're going to drag it up. You can rotate it a little bit. And you're able to adjust the fall off by dragging on this exterior portion of the square, which we want to have a nice smooth fall off between the vignette and our inner circle. We can move things around by pulling the plus around as well. So that looks pretty good. Let's go back to the look area and let's drag our offset down. Now you can see once again, it's affecting the entire frame. That's not what we want. We want to affect with inside the mask or outside. We want to do outside this time and boom, there you can see we've got our nice vignette, which is helping pop our Red Zao lady from the background. And you can see a before and after. So that looks pretty good in terms of an overall grade. I'm happy with that. Uh, the nice thing about speed grades, it's 32 bit floating point, and you've got a tremendous amount of output options, which I won't really get into on this tutorial, but uh, rest assured that you can go out and export uh, to a variety of flavors. So speed grade's pretty awesome. I'm really enjoying playing around with it, and I think you guys are gonna like it. It's a nice versatile tool to do some really high-end color correction with.